Hi everybody, here's a very simple Ethernet cable tester. It's very easy to design, easy to build, and easy to use. It consists of two aluminum project boxes. This one just has a battery, four resistors, and the 8-pin RJ45 connector. And the other project box, that's got uh, four bi-directional red-green LEDs and the connector. And that's it. So, hook up a cable on one and then on the other, and four red LEDs tells me right here that it's straight through, straight through connection, straight or straight through termination on both ends of the cable. It also works with crossover cable, so I can plug this one in and green red green red that tells me that it's crossover and if it's anything else if it's if it's if any of them are off or if any of them are red when it should be green or green when it should be red then i know that something is wrong uh, at least that would be the case in most cases and i'll get into that in a minute but first let's have a look inside these things i mean after all it is very simple got the battery I was too lazy to actually mount the battery anywhere. Just a little uh, battery. Whoa! Damn! Guess I gotta fix that. That don't look good. I actually did say right here, new battery September 2010 is when I installed these things. That was five years ago almost. And looks like 2008 so yeah the battery already expired in 2008 or is that the manufacturing date well anyway oh no here it is 2008 was manufacturing date i suppose 2015 is when it expired march which uh right now is only three months ago so i guess it is really due to start leaking inside the battery socket like this Man, this is pretty crummy. Let me fix this up before I continue with the video. By the way, since these alkaline batteries are, after all, alkaline, then all you gotta do to get rid of the crud is to use an acid. In this case, I've got um, vinegar. Common household, very mild acid should eat away at the stuff on there very quickly. It's always helpful to just to use vinegar when you clean up these nasty battery messes if you can. If there's no damage to any other part of your electronic device then uh, certainly use vinegar whenever possible. And that actually worked a lot quicker than I thought. I thought I was going to have to leave it in here for a few minutes and do a time lapse with the the watch in the background here but no it looks pretty clean already so that was a lot easier than many other nasty battery terminals I've had to, to scrape clean with a knife. Alright, taped that piece of plastic back on here and popped in a couple new batteries, good for another eight years hopefully. And other than that is just four 47 ohm resistors all neatly heat shrunk like this and then the connector that's it in the other box LEDs and connector and wires that's it nothing special about that about the physical construction um, a lot of flexibility for for design could be miniaturized even if you really want to go go hog wild go hog wild with this project you can just you know make little tiny circuit board with a a three volt lithium cell on the the transmitter box or not even a box just ordinary circuit board and then four little surface mount uh, bi-directional LEDs and a connector on the other side and you know could be any size big or small now for a brief explanation of the circuit and if you have a need to actually make one of these things and you probably already know about the different configurations for ethernet cables the type a termination the type b termination the will be these will both be for straight through and of course go a to b for a crossover cable and um, it's really just four or rather two pairs 
that need to be crossed over for the crossed over cable. So let's just look at the straight through, one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, etc., all the way to eight to eight. I've got both types drawn on here on this circuit diagram. So again, that's the straight through for crossover. It's four to four, five to five, seven to seven, and eight to eight, and then one to three, three to one, two to six, and six to two going to these bi-directional LEDs. And if you just examine this for a little bit, you can see how in the crossover configuration, current, positive current from the three volt battery goes in the direction that would then turn on green LED instead of a red LED. And just, again, all red LEDs if it's a straight through cable. Now I must admit this tester is not absolutely perfect. It doesn't account for all problems. You could still uh, have a false positive. For example, if you were measuring, um, if you wanted to test a straight through cable, uh, but one and two, pins one and two happen to be crossover, then you're still gonna get all red LEDs, even though one twisted pair, the, uh, the green, the green and green stripe for the type A termination. If uh, you got uh, green stripe and green on one side and then green and green stripe on the other side, that would show up as just a normal connection as if nothing was wrong. And even so, that might be just fine. I really don't know, but after all these uh, um, ethernet communication um, does work with with uh, differential voltages so maybe it'll still work maybe not I'm really not an expert on it if you do know please comment if uh, if you just happen to have pins one and two switched over if that would actually still work for computer communications but anyway there's a few ways that it would give you a false positive but there's great many more ways that this could go wrong and it would give you an error. Um, it would tell you something else. If it's anything other than red, 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 or green, red, green, red, then you know something's gotta be bad. And again, each LED I have labeled here according to, number, according to the pins. So that LED is for pins one and three, that one is for four and five, etc. So even then, if you see um, something wrong with any given LED then you already know that it's going to be for only uh, two of the eight pins that you have to look at and examine and see where you went wrong and then just redo the connection redo the, uh, the termination on the end of the cable. Now in recent years and this is actually a perfect example I've learned that it's better to not focus on when you actually installed a battery but rather it's better to actually focus on when the battery expires so right here clearly labeled December 2013 so when 2013 approaches you know maybe 2020 will be a good time to open this box up and at least have a peek at the batteries and see what's what's going on in there it's very helpful to do this on all of your battery equipment. If you really want to take care of your stuff, anything that's battery powered, you definitely got to at least put some kind of label on when you think that battery should be replaced. Otherwise, it's just going to corrode and leak on everything inside your device and it'll be a big nasty mess or even totally destroy it. Anyway, that was a side note. I wasn't fully expecting that battery problem, otherwise this video would have been much shorter. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you learned something, please give this video a thumbs up. And thank you for watching. See you later.